one of the first things that I thought of when I first got exposed to GPT Vision was to automate some of the different calculations that deal with financial statements. Now, I work full time at a fintech uh, within our data team for risk and underwriting, and both our risk analysts and our underwriters have to take a look at financial statements daily on the underwriting side of things to determine if a merchant uh, should be processing with us. And on the risk side of things, if a merchant is too risky for our threshold, we should offboard them. Well, going through these financial statements takes a lot of time and they're prone to human error if something is calculated incorrectly. So uh, my idea is to automate a lot of that process. So today I'm going to be showing you guys like a very basic level of a financial document reader that we can build with GPT Vision as well as Streamlit. Uh, the goal of the video is to essentially upload a JPEG image of a financial document and then have a drop down where we can click one of the different fields and allow our AI to specifically tell you the calculations step by step and to tell you if this metric is good or bad. Now, the financial statement that we're going to be taking a look at specifically is Apple's from 2017 to 2018. It's only going to be one page, but this is going to be a really awesome app that we can build out in about 100 lines of code. All right, let's start coding. All right, so let's start going. Um, make sure you pip install Streamlit as well as OpenAI, and you'll also need to open AI API key. Um, so just make sure you do those before uh, we start coding. So what we're going to say is import Streamlit as ST. So as ST, import base64 from OpenAI, import OpenAI, import OS. And then we're going to set up our OpenAI API key here. So OS.environ, and then just put open. AI underscore API underscore key, where it said equals to, and then you're gonna put your key in here. I'm just gonna paste mine in really quick, um, but this will be cut out in the video. Remember your key should start with SK, and if you don't have one, it is free to use. Um, if you don't have one, make sure to grab one on uh, the OpenAI website. For Vision, you're gonna to have to have at least $5 added to your account, so add $5, um, and it won't be instantaneous, so, You'll have to come back in a few hours, um, but that's just what it is. All right, putting in my code and I will delete this. Uh, all right, then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna set up our encode image. So def encode, encode for their image. And then we're gonna put image file like this. And then inside over here, we're gonna say return base. 64.b64 encode image file dot read dot decode utf8 okay then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna set up our title so st title i'm just gonna call this as a balance sheet calculator because that's what we're going to be throwing in over here and we're going to say uploaded file equals st.file uploader so that's our upload file uploader within streamlit we'll say upload image and then you set say a specific type of image so i'm just going to make sure that this is jpeg only so type then inside over here you specify two types of jpeg so jpeg like that, as well as JPEG, so JPEG, like that. Um, make sure you put those in quotes. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna allow the user to have a choice to ask a question. I'm just gonna set a drop down, uh, so that way we have specific criteria that's fed into our model every single time. Um, I've played around with both of these. Personally, if you're gonna have other users use an app, I like the drop down option, although it can take a little bit more time. So it just depends on like what your build use case is. I am gonna continue the drop down in here. So what we're gonna say is calculation option equals and put this in over here to asset ratio. And then I'm just gonna put a few, a few metrics that people look at. So current ratio, 
And there's so much that you could take a look at, right? But I'm just gonna put three in here. And you could also eventually like build out options where you wanna have like multiple selections. Like again, so much more that you could do with this very basic level in this video. Um, but we're also gonna put quick ratio in here. And we're gonna say selected calculation equals st dot select box select calculation and we'll put calculation options calculation option like that i should put options visit we have more than one option so let's just change that really quick to calculation options awesome then um essentially what we're going to do now is take a look at what happens if we have a file that's been uploaded so we're going to say if uploaded file is not none okay we're going to first display the image so st.image that uploaded file caption equals uploaded image and then over here use column with equals true okay then we're going to set up our client so client equals open ai should be seen in my other videos a lot of this is going to be the same now and we're going to say if st dot button we're going to say is calculate so oops calculate and this is just going to show a progress bar I found it's useful to use rather than just having it load in general. So, and no one knows what's going on. So progress bar equals st.progress, throw in a zero over here. Okay, awesome. And then what we're gonna have is essentially our response and everything like this. I'm just gonna copy this. I've copied it every time when I work with GPT vision, just because it's a lot of code and it's easy to make mistakes. Uh, so response equals client chat complete create we set our model in here we build messages role user content type text this is going to change a little bit so i'm going to tell you what we're doing over here then you have type image url image url and then we throw this over here in code image the upload file so this is the prompt that i built out again like quick again though prompt engineering like you can always make better prompts a uh, basic video but all I'm saying is you're a smart financial analyst who can determine calculations using only the image provided. What is an IF selected calculation, right? So we take a look at um, whatever selection that we have over here of three. So debt to asset, current ratio, or quick ratio. So we're putting that in here. So what is the, and we'll use that calculation in 2018. Uh, you'll see why I say 2018. Uh, the reason why is in these financial statements that I'm uploading, I'm uploading one for Apple. It's split between 2017 and 2018. So I'm specifying that we want to see the 2018 year. And then I'm saying, explain if this is a good result or not to someone who knows a little about finance. Look, I work at a FinTech, but I'm not an expert at financial documents. It's not something I look at every single day. So I don't want to misspeak on them. And our GPT AI that we're building out will essentially tell us that. So we have that over here. Awesome. Next, what we're going to do is set over here progress bar dot progress you can set this to 100 over here and then we'll say st dot right we'll say response that's awesome and then st dot right we'll say response dot choices zero and then we'll say dot message Dot content like that and this should be all of our code i'm just going to run this really quick and then when i run my streamlet code over here too so pi m streamlet run fin doc youtube pi and it's going to load this up over here and this is what it specifically looks like i'm just going to pull up a file really quick and um i have this financial statement example two i'll give you the link uh, I actually grabbed it from an article I found on Google. So we're just gonna drop this in over here. So this is what it looks like. Apple, you can see we have 2018 over here, 2017, uh, current assets, non-current, liabilities, non-liabilities, right? 
uh, commitments and agency, stakeholder equity. Then we're going to go over here and choose one of these. So let's say we want to grab current ratio, quick ratio, or debt to asset. And then let's click calculate. So this is calculating right now. And I actually have a connection error. Um, let me actually repopulate my API key. And I'm going to just do that real quick. Um, but you will not be seeing my API key. All right. So I re edited my API key in. We're just going to re upload this over here. I will just do debt to asset ratio and calculate that for progress bar down below. All right, so it's done now and it says, to calculate the debt to asset ratio for Apple in 2018, we look at the total liabilities and total assets from the balance sheet provided in the image, talks about the total liabilities, total assets, and then you can see 0 0.707. That means for every dollar Apple has, it owes about 70 cents in debt. Now I'll explain this is good or not. We need to understand what the ratio represents. A debt to asset ratio is leverage. It talks about this. Um, 70% considered high compared to some industries or more conservative debt to asset ratio might be desired. However, whether it's good or not depends on several factors, industry norms for a tech company, Apple, which is strong cash flow, profit margins, higher debt levels could be strategically used for growth, share buybacks and other investments might not be a concern. Apple's strong brand. Ultimately, whether the debt asset ratio is good or bad depends on an individual strategy, right? Same thing if you want to go over here and find out the current ratio. So grab that and we can rerun this specifically. Um, we'll probably take about 30 seconds or so, and it'll have another paragraph down. All right, and then current ratio, you can see the current ratio is liquidity ratio, and then it says over here 1.12. For someone who knows a little about finance, here's the explanation whether this is a good result or not, and it talks about this and more details over here. I'm not gonna waste your time by reading all this. Uh, but either way, that's essentially how you can build out a very basic version of a calculator where you can just literally just upload a image, and it does all the calculations for you, which is pretty sweet, right? Um, think about the capabilities on this side of things. Uh, for training purposes, if you have an analyst at your company, uh, they aren't too familiar with financial documents, but they need to determine some of these ratios. Uh, you build a local tool like this with Streamlit, um, allow them to upload their financial docs, and then have a little bit more of an understanding so they can kind of get past that learning curve. Or if you're just looking from the automation side of things, if you have a set of different calculations that you specifically need, um, what you can do is build all of that out into your prompt. Let's say you have five different statistics you take a look at for a score. Uh, throw those five statistics in here. Let it automatically calculate each specific time. And um, yeah, and also other things like sometimes you all have financial documents that are multiple pages. So you all have to specifically look at those factors or if you want to compare year over year. So you will have to make tweaks on it. But uh, I, like I said, I mentioned a few times in this video, this is a very bare bones example. Uh, you could easily expand upon this in so many different ways, especially depending on what industry you are in. So just like that, we were able to build a very basic level of a financial document reader. And honestly, you could make this application way better if you spent a few weeks on it and uh, if you had specific metrics that you needed for your own internal team. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading multiple videos every single week as I try to progress my skill set. Now, if you want to watch even more videos on OpenAI, I have a full playlist right over here.